So the last thing I want to show is a couple of examples of baking this lighting information to the vertex level as opposed to textures. So the first thing we're going to do is go into our render settings over here, and I'm going to switch from bake to texture to bake to vertices. I'm going to leave the same target objects in here so that it will bake to each one of these objects. And then additionally, I'm going to come in and I'm going to change my output settings. So instead of outputting full shading, this time I just want to do indirect and uh, illumination and indirect illumination. Um, so at any rate, let's go ahead and bake this and we'll see the results. So one thing that I may need to do after I bake this is to actually enable my vertex color. So there are a couple of different ways of doing this. You can do it on a per object basis. There is a handy bonus tool. If you aren't familiar with bonus tools, you can get this on the area and install it as a kind of an add-on to Maya. And under display, there is something called vertex color display, which basically allows us to turn on the vertex color for our scene or individual objects. So if I grab the boat, for instance, and turn on vertex color display, it will show me the vertex colors for that boat. I'm actually going to select all of the objects for the dock and turn on vertex colors for that. So what I'm seeing here is I'm getting a little bit too much uh, kind of blue in my light. So I'm actually going to go in and change this to render only illumination. So the direct illumination is a little bit too much here. So I'm going to come back here and I'll turn off indirect illumination and look at only illumination. So let's render that out once again and pretty quickly we should see the results. So you can see how fast and, and uh, kind of zippy that is as far as uh, seeing the feedbacks pretty quickly. But I've got a few problems. So one of the more glaring problems is that I've got these really high contrast areas where I really shouldn't have them. And I've got a couple of other areas where I've got basically kind of some weirdness um, between objects here. So I'm going to do a couple of things. One is I'm going to go in to my render settings and I'll find the vertex bake options. Actually, let me pull my window over so you can see this. Under render settings, I'm going to go to the turtle tab and under vertex bake options. The first thing I want to do is I want to fix this problem where I have these really dark compared to really light areas. So what's happening here is I've actually got a face right here. And if I pull that face over, you can see that there's a, there's a hidden vertex right here. It's actually getting blocked by this board, this beam that goes across that. So it's actually being shadowed essentially. So what I want to do is actually correct that problem. So there's a simple setting in here that I can use to correct this. So if I go into my vertex bake settings and I'll pull down a little bit, what I want to do is actually turn on uh, my sample mode to be triangles. So if I scroll up here a little bit, I'm having a hard time finding it. There it is, at the top actually. Under sample mode, Right now it's per vertex, so each uh, end of that, in each vertice is getting uh, sampled kind of on its own. So I want to switch this to a triangle subdivision, which will basically kind of average out the values for each triangle as opposed to the individual vertices. That will alleviate, eliminate these, these areas where a single vertice is being shattered by other vertices. So I might want to tweak my sample settings here a little bit. I'm going to set that to 8 and 16. 8 will basically affect the smaller triangles, 16 will affect the larger triangles. At any rate, let's pull back and we'll do a quick render of that. Let's pull this out of the way. And with that one simple setting, now you can see that it's gone a long way to cleaning up my entire lighting scheme here. Let's actually move this window. Now, I've kind of cleaned up those problems, but what I've introduced is other problems where I have areas where I have these kind of lines. So these are basically areas where I have some kind of a border, whether it's a geometry border or something like that, uh, or it's uh, an area where the angle of the light um, is, is very sharp. So what I want to do is kind of blend those together. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to turn on what's called my vertex filter. And the vertex filter will basically go in and do a little bit of averaging wherever I have these coincident verts, where I have high contrast between coincident verts. So anywhere where I have these kind of hard edge lines, it's actually going to go in and clean that up quite nicely. So I'm not going to worry about the filter size for now. I'll just leave it at that. And we'll re-render that. And very quickly, now we'll go in and 
give me a, nut, a much nicer result. So it was very fast and very easy, and, and within a matter of you know, seconds, I was able to go in and, and get a pretty clean, pretty accurate render. So then ultimately, I might want to see what this looks like comped in with my texture. So I'm just going to go to my uh, hypershade over here, and I'm going to get rid of all of the hardware visualization nodes. These are the, the black nodes. Those are the ones that were used to pre-visualize my light maps. And then I'm actually going to turn on my texturing. And you can see when I turn on my texturing, my, my vertex color is not actually showing. So I just want to comp my vertex color with my textures. So I'll just go under bonus tools once again, bring up my vertex color display. And instead of setting this to vertex color only, I'm actually going to set this to vertex color plus texture. And now I can actually see the effect of, of the texture and the vertex color. So that wraps it up. That's uh, a fairly high level overview, but hopefully you get an idea of kind of how Turtle is meant to work and the kinds of things you're, you're able to do with it. Again, it's very uh, widely used in the games industry specifically for the tasks that I'm showing. Uh, other examples, again, would be uh, ambient occlusion um, is, is a very fast bake. And also, for generating things like normal maps, it can be used for that, as well as more advanced things like creating spherical harmonics uh, for in-game lighting, which we'll save for another post. So thanks for your time. We'll see you later. Bye.